Inspired by the radical hospitality of Jesus Christ, Pine Street Church welcomes all of God's children into the life of the church, regardless of gender identity, age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, physical limitation, educational background, or economic situation. We embrace everyone. We are a spiritual community of unconditionality. We accept everyone and we mean it. We believe in acceptance without exception. We also seek to inspire life. We believe in our human potential to be astonished about the beauty in our lives and to experience abundance. The spark of the divine is in everybody and we believe in setting it free. Finally, we strive to create more. Each of us was born to be a creator of beauty, kindness, equality, gentleness, joy. As imitators of our original creator, we too have the opportunity to create. Thank you for joining us today for our remote worship hybrid edition. As we inch closer to a return to our physical building for in-person worship this fall, we invite you to join together in this sacred digital space from wherever you are as we continue to be the church scattered rather than the church gathered. May you find hope and joy, love and meaning, and challenge and inspiration today. Welcome to Pine Street Church. And so last weekend, I had this fairly enthralling and soulful even romantic experience of Van Gogh Alive. It's an art exhibition in Denver. It'll be around through the fall. You've perhaps heard about it. It's this 45-minute immersion into the works of the famous painter, Vincent Van Gogh. And it's this symphony of light and color and sound. It just brings his masterpieces to life in ways that take you into his mind and his humanity a window onto his state of mind while he was creating at different periods of his life. There are quotes from his letters, there's classical music from the likes of Debussy that puts a soundtrack to his life. It's just so cool. There's a life-size replica of his bedroom and a mirrored room full of sunflowers. Sunflowers were the subject of some, some of his most famous paintings. And really, it's unlike any art museum experience I've ever had. And the impression of it has stayed with me because it's all there. Magic and melancholy, there's beauty, tragedy, color, sound, all the feels. Van Gogh Alive is a lived experience. And I walked away wanting to know even more about this genius man. His mind, his works, the works of his mind, what he loved, no matter how cut off from love that he apparently often felt. In one of his famous letters to his brother Theo, Vincent van Gogh writes, I'm always inclined to believe that the best way of knowing the divine is to love a great deal. Love that friend, that wife, that person, that thing. Whatever you like, you'll be on the right path to knowing more thoroughly afterwards. That's what I say to myself. But you must love with a high, serious, intimate sympathy, with a will, with intelligence. And you must always seek to know more thoroughly, better and more. Van Gogh sought to connect love through the torment of his mental illness, through the ecstasy and joy he found in art. And I felt like I got to taste and see a little of his life through the Van Gogh Alive experience, this kinetic and full-bodied connection to the artist and his art. Frankly, this reminds me a whole lot of what the psalm says. Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. Or in today's gospel, as we get it from St. John, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the living bread 
that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. St. John puts these words in Jesus' mouth, I think, because God wants to put the living bread in our mouths, in our souls, to taste and see how lovely and delicious and good life with God can really be. I think this is where I sympathize with Van Gogh's hunger and thirst for purpose and love. The same man full of longings like you and me who wrote, I feel that there is nothing more truly artistic than to love people. Adding again, you must love with a high, serious, intimate sympathy, with a will, with intelligence, and you must always seek to know thoroughly better and more. Like bread to hungry people, Jesus is a staple to our daily diet that we are invited to take in. Because what we feed grows. Feed any appetite for grumbling and complaining, and chaos grows. Feed appetites for criticism, and judgment grows more and more. What we feed grows. What we starve dies. Feed your appetite for love. Feed your appetite for faith. Feed your appetite for justice. Feed your appetite for peace. And all of this goodness grows. And in the most intimate terms possible, Jesus wants us to take in his life. I mean, our appetites for what is unhealthy to our bodies and minds and psyches might be great. Some of us know what it's like to feed our dragons rather than our dreams to feed our need to focus on the worst rather than to believe the best. Or even in relationships, I love this one, when two givers indulge in a connection, it's like magic, alchemy. I water you, you water me, we never drain each other, we just grow. Yes, Jesus invites us to indulge in him as the bread of life, to feed off of his life, to satisfy our physical hungers, yes, because remember that sometimes people are so physically hungry that good news only comes in the form of bread, right? At first, and then there's more. <laughs> to satisfy what we are hungry for spiritually, psychologically, and emotionally, too. Now, notice that Jesus is breaking off these bread bits of wisdom amidst grumblers and complainers. The temple authorities are grumbling and complaining because they are so stuck on Jesus saying, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They can't get past this. There is no room for any new thought or vision. Well, we have hungers caused by fears of not having enough or not being right or wanting to honor tradition. Hungers can be caused by being around a bunch of whiners and complainers and grumblers too, whether it's the ancestors in the wilderness, as Jesus alludes to in today's gospel, or the religious leaders who get jumpy when Jesus starts talking the way he does. I know it's easy to do so, but there's a better way to live than to let grumbling and complaining and criticism and noisemakers get in the way of what we are really, truly hungry and thirsty for, you know? To kind of cut through the fat of what doesn't really ultimately matter. For Van Gogh, it was love and purpose. Most art critics would say he found it, even if brief briefly in his 37 years. And I, I think it's found too, it was beautiful to see that in his life, but I also think it's found too in the words of a song I want you to hear today by progressive rock band Tool. It's a song called Borderline, and words that you'll hear sung and played in just a second. I find these lyrics of longing, they, they just kind of leap out at me. Deep within the borderline, show me that you love me and that we belong together. Relax. Turn around and take my hand. I can help you change tired moments into pleasure, 
Say the word and we'll be well upon our way. Blend and balance pain and comfort deep within you till you will not want me any other way. It's not enough. I need more. Nothing seems to satisfy. I don't want it. I just need it to breathe, to feel, to know I'm alive. Jesus was the fully alive human. He longs for you and me to be fully alive too. To take the bread of life into our bodies and psyches and spirits so that we can become Christ incarnate, body, blood, and bone of God in the way we think and speak and contemplate and take action in this world. It's the invitation to rise above the noisemakers and grumblers and complainers, maybe especially when all of that noise is inside of us. Truth is, we don't have to numb out or live jaded. We don't have to settle for the burden of boredom or sleepwalking through our lives with half-baked truths and lies. It connects to, again, what Van Gogh wrote to his brother Theo. You must love with a high, serious, intimate sympathy, with a will, with intelligence, and you must always seek to know more thoroughly, better, and more. I think that's what Jesus is up to in today's gospel lesson. To come and taste and see, to crave the bread of life so much that it takes us deeper into life with God and one another, a place of trust and intimacy, because God is with us wherever we are. Christ offers us on the daily the fully baked loaf of life that we can savor and share. Not that it will be an easy life, mind you, but that it will be a good life to taste and see how lovely and delicious and good life with God really can be because it's all there. Magic and melancholy, beauty, and tragedy, color, and sound, and here we are to feel and take it all in, all of it, and be filled by the one alone who has quite enough love to feed us with what deep down it is we really do want most, what we need most, from the one who is ready to feed us forever. Amen. Feet the sea.